the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. I'm Dan Hurley. The Urban League was founded more than a century ago in 1910. The national office is in New York uh, with 88 affiliates operating in 36 states. Locally, the Cincinnati and Dayton Urban Leagues joined together a few years ago to create an Urban League of Greater Southwestern Ohio, a regional vision. The Urban League works to promote an inclusive community of workforce development and business development and entrepreneurship. For 41 years, the Urban League has published an annual uh, report entitled The State of Black America. The report is packed with data and over the years has created a series of indices, including the Black-White Index, the Hispanic-White Index, the Metropolitan Index, all quantitative tools for tracking racial equality in the United States. Two weeks ago, the National Urban League issued its report for 2017 entitled Protect Our Progress. Always an influential report, this year's report is attracting even more attention because of the moment that we happen to be in. To discuss the report, I am joined by Shara Fisher-Jackson, the Executive Director of the Greater Cincinnati Urban League, and Branford Brown, the uh, Executive Director of the Miami Valley Urban League, headquartered in Dayton. Welcome to Newsmakers. Thank you for coming down from Dayton. Thank and, you for inviting and me. And braving, uh, braving I-75 <laughs> in the morning. So um, before we get started on all the details and the data in this report, there is a lot of commentary going on right now, and it's indicated even in the title this year, Protect Our Progress. There is a sense that black America is endangered in terms of holding on to the progress that has been made. Were you surprised by that approach in this report? Because this report came out of the national office. Rambert? Wasn't surprised at all. I actually, anticipated. Uh, I, I think when uh, we we first saw the president's uh, proposed budget, uh, I, th I think it sent up an alert to me uh, personally, uh, and I think that the National Urban League was certainly ahead of that, uh, and and already knew that there were some things that if we're we're not careful, uh, that we might lose uh, if, we, if we don't try to protect what we've already gained. Mm -hmm. Shara, how how sort of intense do you feel that? the either lack of attention or the actual uh, negative activity is coming out of this administration. I think it requires us to be ever vigilant in knowing that any progress that we make is a perfect storm of balancing the political, the local, the national, and the regional to make sure that that progress is not only protected but continues to advance. I think one of the things in reading past reports is that given the, the Great Recession of a decade ago. It's been slow getting out of that situation, but it, you know, just about the time that now it looks like maybe the economy is picking up and that some data looks good in this report, although it's marginal, um, then you face this shift in the political environment. And it's kind of interesting to see how, how that's all set up. So let's take a look at uh, some of this and there's there's two, uh, there, there's a graph, there are two circle graphs that I'd like to take a look at first. And they go into the components, they go into what's being measured by this report. And we can take a look at that and uh, if you look on the right, and I know it's very difficult to see, but it sort of shows the proportions in those different colors of how important economics, which is the biggest, health, education, social justice, and civic engagement. So this isn't just taking some simple number and saying that's it. This is proportional, and these have been proportional over time, over decades, so people can track progress. On the other side, you see a circle graph that says the conclusion this year is that the overall situation is that for black America, they're at 72.3% of where whites are. So looking at that, looking at those factors, what do you see as the most important factors that is holding, holding things back and what needs to be worked on? Either one of you. 
I think the biggest proportion of the pie that we see is in economics, in economics. and we know that is vital. Um, the report also highlights and brings to attention an income equity index as well as and we're going to come to that but equity index those are the core because without that basic foundation of stability and economics it is hard to thrive and progress on the other measures of health and civic engagement and education okay I also think that uh, one of the uh, measurements under economics uh, if, if we look at housing uh, so I think that with the recession you talked about back in 2007-8 uh, uh, black home ownership uh, which is uh, a source of, uh, of legacy uh, establishing of wealth uh, has gone down dramatically uh, and so I think that uh, we, we really have to concentrate on the two areas that Shara talked about. So economics, housing, part of that because mm -hmm that housing is a long-term investment that people make. Now, these metropolitan indices that are in here are looked at every year because they, they set rank, people love rankings. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we're gonna start with the uh, indice on, I think, unemployment first. Uh, so is, if you look at that, you can see that they rank 71 different metropolitan regions on, there we go, 71 different metropolitan regions. And the number one region in this particular area is San Antonio, Texas, but Dayton falls at 40 and it was last year, and I am having really trouble seeing, um, was at 46 and Cincinnati is ranked at 54 uh, this year. So both Dayton and Cincinnati in the lower half of these rankings in terms of wealth and, and differential. What does that say to you? Little progress for both cities. Both of them have moved up a little bit. What's that tell you right now? That our work is more important than ever and that we really need to focus on how we do that work and what it means. In addition to looking at just the numbers, it's important that we look at the impact. We talk about employment and unemployment. It's not just a calculation of whether or not someone has a job. It's the nature and the quality of that job. Does that job provide a family wage? Does that job provide benefits? Does that job have opportunities for advancement so someone that may come in at entry level wage has the potential to move toward a family wage? So is there a ladder there that people can move up? And there's a lot of particularly service jobs that are entry level that don't have a ladder to move up. They're sort of, you're stuck where you are. Right. And while our work many times focuses on how to help people achieve those jobs and have the skills, our work is also now focused on working with employers mm -hmm. to say how do they create an environment to attract the talent that they need and support that talent. And that is a true partnership for this region to say how do we work from both sides to make sure that we can make some progress and move the needle on those numbers. How much can an organization, both cities moved up marginally. How much can you do locally and how much is this just a reflection of what's going on in the national economy and or even in the local economy but you know how much impact can the Urban League have, for example? I think we can have, and we do have significant impact uh, locally, uh, especially through our regional program uh, ranging from Dayton to Cincinnati, but I think also acting in uh, collaboration with other organizations, uh, I think we're, we're able to move the needle uh, and to, to be successful in getting people to work uh, and, and to improving their lot when they are working. Okay. The other of those metro indices is on unemployment, um, unemployment equality index. Dayton ranks 40th uh, this year, moving up from 61st, so a big jump uh, in terms of unemployment, lowering the unemployment rate. And Cincinnati is ranked 54th compared to 63 last year. So again, when I look at last year, the recovery really hadn't come here at all. I mean, there was still some difficult situations, and at least there is some movement here. Is that what you're seeing as well? Yeah, I, I think the um, the broader community uh, is experiencing uh, an influx of jobs, especially in the Dayton area. Uh, and again, I think now we have to prepare the workforce uh, to be, be able to move into those positions. That whole area of talent is just big. It's the new 
I don't want to say a new buzzword because I think it's more important than that, but that is really what companies are talking about. They need the right talent, and that's sort of what you were talking about before. And how do you get people prepared to fill the jobs that are needed and, not, and the jobs that have ladders? So, I think a lot of our work is also focused not just on job readiness, but true career readiness and someone understanding the perspective, not only of the culture of work, the basics and what we call the soft skills and getting ready, but how someone moves at work. What are the employer expectations? How do you ask for that promotion and advancement? How do you make sure that your educational attainment continues to progress so that you're ready to take advantage of those opportunities? Why is that? Is that across all workers? Or is that something that African Americans or Hispanics have faced special problems with? Knowing how to, that career, moving it up, knowing how to move forward and be in the right place at the right time once they're inside an organization. So, so I think we work with people with a lot of barriers, and so one of those barriers is long-term unemployment, uh, sometimes generational un uh, unemployment, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we lack the experience uh, in in terms of having that insight, uh, having that model, uh, and so I think it's. I'm not sure about other communities, but I think it's critical in our community. Uh, one of the things that we try to do is to pr provide coaching uh, after getting people employment. Mm. Uh, and so we, we, we continue to work through those uh, issues of, of how do you uh, grow and, 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 and advance in your work. So it's not just getting the job, mm -hmm. staying the job, advancing the job, and some mentoring, some continuing Absolutely. to work is, is, can really be important, especially, I think, if people um, haven't been employed or have yes. long-term unemployment, unemployment problems. Shara, in Cincinnati, what are some of the concrete programs that you think address these kinds of problems? Our flagship Life Ready program that has a continuum of six tracks from people that have never been employed to mid-career professionals who are looking for new opportunities and mentors. And it has all of those basic elements to make sure that somebody is ready and that they can move. It is interviewing skills. It is resume creation. It is how to network at the corporate level. Mm -hmm. It's how to identify your corporate member mentor. It's how to use LinkedIn to make sure that your professional <laughs> profile um, is one that will be attractive. It's how to make an introduction or negotiate an agreement with a headhunter if you're looking for a professional position. So we s meet with and engage almost 1,100 people every year. At all, through at all six of those levels. Through all six of those tracks. One of our most important programs is beginning with youth at 14 years old to make sure that they understand how do they get work ready and job ready and build careers so that they are the people that are in that talent pipeline and ready. In Dayton, similar situation? Do you have a similar program or do you have something, you take a different approach? We have similar programs. Uh, one of our programs that we have uh, is a program uh, that deals with court-involved youth. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we start early uh, with kids and, and they may not have gone you know, to, to juvenile jail or whatnot, but uh, through intervention or whatnot, they're referred to us. And so we work with them with those same skills uh, uh, and we also try to give them some experience in employment uh, to, to get them with the mindset to get excited about working, uh, to take pride in, in getting a, a paycheck uh, or pay card, I guess it is now, uh, but, but to, uh, to, 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 to take ownership of uh, responsibility in terms of what they're, they're, how they manage their, their finances, their life. I think that's very important because the technical skills are always something that someone can learn and acquire. But those other pieces that we focus on with our Financial Opportunity Center and coaching, what do you do with your first check? How do you manage that? How do you invest it? There are so many things that complement what most people would consider the job skills that we know are important to make people successful. So frequently referred to as soft skills and sometimes what I like what I've heard that I think I like better, they're the harder skills. Absolutely. They're not the soft skills. They're the harder skills because how do you make this job really work for you in the long run? So thank you very much for the work you're doing. And I want to make sure people know how to read this entire report and also find out about the Urban League because you're making a statement by working together about the future of this region, which is going to reach 
from north of Dayton to down into Kentucky. Th these two regions are going to be merged, maybe in the next census, but we've said that a couple of other times, haven't we? <laughs> so anyway, let's make sure that people know how to find this. To read the full uh, State of Black America report for 2017, go to www.stateofblackamerica.org. And if you have never studied the State of Black Cincinnati uh, 2015 report published by the local Urban League, go to www gucl.org and at the top there's this revolving thing just tap on to the 19 uh, the 2015 report it's really an important report stay tuned after the break uh, the leader of one of the local minority accelerators one of the ways to move the local economic numbers in a positive direction thank you Welcome back. The national and local economies are in a state of rapid change. Though it may seem that big corporations like P&G, Macy's, Kroger dominate, the real growth is in technology and the entrepreneurial activity. Most new jobs are created by companies that are five years old or less, and technology is the driver not only of many of those new jobs, but redefining traditional jobs. So if we want uh, to not only grow the local economy and create new opportunity and at the same time change the long-standing patterns of who participate and who benefits from the creation of that new wealth, it's necessary to be intentional. One way to do that is by creating incubators where new companies can find office space and services while they mature and then move out on their own. The Hamilton County Development Corporation in Norwood is an incubator that was created in the 1980s after the closure of the GM plant. HCDC has graduated over 100 companies and provides a base of operation for nearly 50 entrepreneurs at this moment. Accelerators provide a second approach. And to talk about the role of minority business accelerator that is sponsored by the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber, I am joined now by Darren Reedus, who leads the accelerator. Mr. Reedus uh, worked in banking, where he became passionate about helping minority business owners uh, find the funding, and has also worked as a consultant on minority business development. Darren, welcome to the Thank Newsmakers. You, Great and to be just here. to reveal all conflicts of interest, you and I worked together at the Chamber for a number of years. Absolutely. Uh, so we know each other uh, fairly well. What's an accelerator, especially as opposed to an incubator? An accelerator is essentially, um, could be for early stage tech companies, as you mentioned, or it could be for what is now referred to as scale ups, businesses that have high growth potential, whether they be startups or not. But the fundamental objective of, of an accelerator, as the name implies, is to accelerate the growth of the company by providing a series of services and connections that the entrepreneur, typically on his or her own, would have a difficult time absent that assistance. So whether that's connectivity and preparation for capital, uh, preparation and connectivity to new clients, it could be for a tech company that helped with the creation of a uh, prototype. And so you look at what are the critical milestones that are needed to move the business forward. And an accelerator really wraps a comprehensive set of services around that entrepreneur to really expedite the growth process. So different accelerators define who they want to work with in different ways. Correct. Um, and for your accelerator, you're looking for companies that already are established. They're not necessarily brand new, right? That is correct. They're sort of a they have to have reached a certain point where you believe they can take off? That is correct. Yeah, so the origins of the Minority Business Accelerator that I lead was really more about accelerating what we call kind of supply chain companies. Businesses that could be viable vendors uh, to larger corporate buyers and institutional organizations. So they already had to have some base of foundation and infrastructure. And so the original objective was to identify firms that were already at at least a million dollars in annual revenue. But okay, that's, so that's pretty, that sounds pretty sizable to most of us. That's already correct. a million dollars. Correct, already a million dollars, but significantly uh, more potential in terms of upside. And so again, when you think about 
the just the scale and capacity that you typically have to have to service larger corporate buyers that was kind of the initial sort of threshold and so the accelerator began actually with about uh, 23 companies uh, some years ago and they've been uh, accelerated <laughs> over the years uh, today there's 35 firms uh, that collectively do just over a billion dollars in aggregate annual sales so what would be an example of a company that you feel particularly proud that the accelerator has been able to help? Yeah, there, there are a number of, of companies. Uh, one certainly that um, comes to mind, uh, Triversity Construction here in town was a uh, former, if you will, uh, accelerator firm. Um, Stephen Hightower, Hightower Petroleum. Uh, these are some phenomenal examples of companies over the years that have come through the process. So what were you able to do for a Triversity, for example, in that construction market? What, what actually could the accelerator connect them to that they couldn't get connected? Because they were already in existence. They were already known, at least seemingly. Correct. So what were you able to do? So wh what typically happens is, we often complement, you know, gaps. And so there's often a scenario where, as you mentioned, organizations, individuals have a certain set of relationships, a certain existing sort of, uh, whether it's capacity, infrastructure, but there's always room for growth. There's always a gap. And we try to identify where can we add value. And so it, it does differ from organization to organization. You, 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 you do a customized sort of assessment of where is the business today. And again, many are doing really well, but the idea is there is always a, a room for a complementary sort of growth. So you're looking for companies that may be doing well, but have growth potential. Totally. If, you, if they've already peaked out, even if that's wherever that is, that's totally. not what you're interested in. And when we say minority, what, what, does, what does that cover? In, in your mind? So for our accelerator, very specifically, it focuses on the African-American and Hispanic community. This was intentional and by design. The origins of the accelerator date back to 2003, shortly after the uh, civil unrest right. that took place here. And those two populations were identified uh, specifically because they still represent the largest two um, economic disparities as it relates to economic uh, output. And so really trying to close the gap economically in those two specific populations. Now, how do you measure success? Is it just by increasing revenue? Is it, are you looking at jobs or new jobs that have been created? How do you, how do you care about measuring this? And when I say you, the accelerator. So certainly we look at uh, traditional measures such as job creation. So today uh, the aggregate portfolio has created about 3,500 jobs since the inception of the accelerator. Of how many companies? Did you say? 35. 35, so 3,500 jobs. Correct. Okay. And so we have set a very ambitious five-year objective to frankly double those numbers in the next five years. So an additional 3,500 jobs, uh, born largely out of the fact that these companies are now of a size and scale where they can take advantage of um, more, if you will, mainstream uh, growth strategies such as acquisitions, mergers, uh, receiving larger sums of private equity investments and things of that nature. And would you help take them through something like that? Absolutely. Where they go through an acquisition or a merger? Absolutely. So, so every company, whether it's the early stage tech companies that you mentioned earlier or some of the more established, I mean, there is always a next level. And it's interesting that uh, despite the fact that there's been an increase in the number of minority firms, pure number, there's still a significant disparity as it relates to minority firms of size. And it's well documented that minority firms tend to hire more minority workers. Typically most of the statistics say four out of six employees generally for a minority firm versus one out of six for a non-minority firm. But if you, that four to six ratio is typically capped because of the size of the firm. So mm -hmm. if you can take that same ratio at a much higher level firm, 
uh, your impact on job creation is more substantial. So, so people sometimes uh, will say, well, our church firm is large enough to kind of make it on their own, and certainly they could do well, but the whole idea of the acceleration yep. really is to accelerate job creation. Okay, I want to make sure people out there know how to get in touch with the minority accelerator. So uh, to contact the Minority Business Accelerator, check out the website at the Cincinnati USA Regional Chambers website or call 513-579-3156. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Next week, I'll be joined by Laura Mitchell, the new superintendent of the Cincinnati Public Schools. Have a great week.